Hi guys, welcome to another episode. So this is a direct update to last year's video, how to prune one year old apple trees, which I will post up in the cards up above here. But you don't necessarily need to watch that video in order to learn the lessons that I'm gonna be teaching you in this video. There's going to be three apple trees that I'm going to be pruning. And every single one of them is going to have a slightly different shape. Some of them are gonna have a bunch of branches on them like this one here. And others are going to be a little bit more bare, but they're going to be super tall. So you don't have to watch all three of them, but if you want three examples, they'll be there for you. I'm going to make a separate video that talks about the style that I'm pruning these apple trees in. It's called a modified central leader. And once ready, I will put it up in the cards above here as well for you to watch. So the first apple tree that I'm going to be pruning is the one behind me here. It probably got up to about two and a half meters tall, which is right around eight foot, which I prefer my apple trees to be more around seven foot. I'm tall, but not quite that tall. So you can see here, amongst all these branches, I've got three main vertical leaders here. One, two, and then there's three. This one all the way up to the right, and this one are a little bit more horizontal than they are vertical which is good because you really only want one vertical leader. So one way that you can easily reduce the height a little bit is to just reduce it down to the, the one vertical leader. I don't want to prune it down to, or I don't want to just prune off this one and this one and say, like, leave this one here. Because if I do that, then I'm creating one and two wounds. Whereas if I prune it down to the third, the lowest vertical leader here, then I only have one wound. I would much rather only have one wound rather than two. The more wounds you have, whether that be cuts, like pruning cuts, that's more ways for bacteria and bad fungus to start getting into your tree. So the more wounds you can prevent, the better. Like I said, it's gonna be going down to that third one down there. Come in on an angle, like so and make a good clean cut. Just like that, that's perfect. This vertical leader here will take over and all the energy will mostly be focused on this vertical leader here. From here, you can reduce it even further. Turn it down to a bud that faces a favorable direction. So like here, there's a bud that faces inwards. So if I do that, that it grows kind of in a curve back up, kind of goes back in and up, and that's pretty good. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm gonna take an angle, like so, snip it off just like that. From here on, I'm gonna hope that these other buds that are along here are gonna develop and then I'm going to create my second scaffold that's going to be at the top of this, of the apex here. Here's a view now of the total tree. So what you're trying to do is have your main scaffold, which is going to be down here. You can see this, the horizontal branches that are arching up. And then have a secondary scaffold, which is going to be at the top. This is what we're left with now. The reason why you have that secondary scaffold and makes it a modified central leader rather than a regular central leader is so that you can have that secondary sa scaffold there. You can use that to keep your tree short because you're basically just constantly replacing your leader at the top. So when you prune this down and you get all your horizontal branches with your, with your branches going up, ideally horizontally like these guys, you could just constantly, every year you can replace them and that just keeps your tree small. It's a really easy way to maintain the height of your tree. So, but you're gonna have that same principle down lower on the tree as well. I'm gonna prune a couple branches out, but it's the same principle down below as it is up, up top. Really the only other branch that I want to prune off is this branch here because it's just growing a little bit too far in towards the center. You could argue that maybe the one above it is doing something similar, but it's really not that bad. It has its own space. 
same thing with all the other ones i just feel like this one is just getting you know maybe a little bit too congesting especially if these other ones here along the main trunk start developing so i'm just going to leave a little bit of a the bolts where the branch starts to grow out there will always be a little bit of a bolt that happens right at the base where it comes out of the trunk so i'm going to leave that but besides that it's going to come off like so this little bit of swelling if you leave that will allow the branch to heal over better don't forget to sanitize your pruners in between each tree I'm just using a Clorox wipe. You just want to use anything that kills any bacteria, fungus that could be transmitted in between your trees. All ready to go. Our first tree there was called Ira. And this is our second tree. It's called Odisso. The full look. Lots of branches here. Lots to choose from. But there's definitely some branches that I would like to clean up. Primarily in here, you can see there's a second branch that comes from the base from this existing branch. That is always a bad thing. I've got it happening on the other side as well. If you can see that, this one shooting almost right up from an existing branch that was already established. You don't ideally have that happen. And up top, I've got too many vertical, vertical leaders there that I gotta just take down to ideally just one. Some of these are coming out nice and horizontal like this one. But I'd like to start with the top, so let's start with the top again. So in order to get a good idea of where I wanna prune my leader, I have to also bear in mind that this is where the tree got pruned off before. This is the nursery doing this where I bought it from. And as you can see, that's a pretty steep curve there. Ideally, I prune into the curve or back into the curve so it goes back inwards so that you don't get a constantly slanting tree. You don't want that. And I do have one leader here. This is essentially my lowest leader, I believe, just because I feel like this one here is starting to become a little bit more horizontal. Plus, I also don't need it to be that low. I feel like this is just fine. And it goes into that curve. It actually might be a little low, but it's it's okay. But this goes nicely into that curve down below here. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we are back at the top of the tree now, or the apex, with all of my vertical leaders here. And I like this leader the best because it goes back into the center of the tree that is probably about the only time you'd want a branch to go into the center of your tree but at the top of the apex that's can be a good thing in this scenario anyways <laughs> so i'm going to prune it down to this branch here and that'll take over as the new leader so we're going to come in at an angle like so And take the top down so that's the top of the tree done now these leaders might still be a little bit tall but i don't really want to prune them down i feel like it'll be okay for one year next year more than likely though i'll end up pruning them down so the problems now that i have to fix are two branches the ones right side by side here that are coming off from the base of an existing branch that is growing very well and then I've got a branch over here that's crossing with another branch that I've also got to fix. I might actually take some of these branches out in favor of some of these other ones because I feel like they're starting to get too many branches in this area. So here I've actually got a couple of issues. I've got a branch growing above another branch. I've got a branch coming off at the base of an existing branch. So there's actually several branches here that I've got to cut off. And I kind of like this branch here because the reason is, is it's coming off one of the lowest. I've got a couple smaller branches that are coming off lower, but this is already establishing as a made scaffold and it's one of the lower scaffolds. And you want to have some, at least 
one bud space in between all these branches. So if I can keep this one, then it gives me more flexibility, essentially. This one is, also happens to kind of be growing into the house there, which is not really ideal. Like mostly this branch here, but it's also sticking out really far. So in this particular scenario, I think I might actually favor this one. So that means that this whole thing I'm going to take out. First, I'll start by taking this guy out, leaving a little bit of a bump there. I may end up having to clean this up a little bit. Same thing over here. Just like so. Now, this is probably going to sprout all the branches if I left it like this. Then this wouldn't heal very well either, so I want to take it down all the way to the base. Like that. And that's a little bit better. So the last step for this tree is pretty straightforward. I'm going to start off by removing this branch here. It is coming off at the base of an existing branch. So whether I remove this branch or not, this one has to come off no matter what. It is just not growing in a good spot. So that's coming off no matter what anyways. I might as well just start with that. Leaving a little bit of a bump though, either way. Just like so. Next, I want to decide which one of these two I want to keep. They're really kind of growing over the top of one another, which is not great. Ideally, I pick one or the other. In deciding whether which one you want to keep or not, it is always a bit of a help to keep a bud space in between each branch. So I already decided I wanted to keep this one. I really like this one. I want to keep that one. So if I remove this one, then I at least have one bud space extra in between these two. I still don't have... Well, I kind of do actually. There's a branch that we removed on the back, so then we'll also have a bud space in between these two as well. So if I remove this, then we have a bud space in between these two, and we'll have a bud space in between these two. So removing this one is actually the perfect choice in this scenario for me. Leaving a little bit of a bud. That one did not want to come off. <laughs> but there you go, that's perfect. So this is now the total look at the tree. And I don't think I could have really asked for better. Everything is coming up really beautifully. Everything has its own space. Everything is coming out horizontally and then slowly arching up. It's just um, pretty amazing. This is beautiful. This is exactly what you want to see. So, off to the next one. So this is the overall look of the last tree. As you can see, I still have it tied up over there. And this one is called Calypso. It is a very vigorous grower. Produces a bunch of side branches, as you can see. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to take too many of them off. Only the ones that are just really growing in wrong spots and things like that. Here's the top of the tree. If I were to prune anything off, it would be down to a branch that grows back inwards to kind of make it kind of like an elast tree. It got pruned off right there. So I would want it to grow back in to kind of strain it back out. So something that this tree will do a lot is send out a bunch of branches at the end of a branch. This this happens to be the top, but it's the same for some of the lower branches as well. So you can see that there's one, two, three, and there's another fourth one in the back. This one is a little bit lower down, but there's a, essentially four branches coming off of the same point, which you can already kind of tell is starting to create a bit of a bulge there. And that happens when there's too many branches coming off of one point. This is really why you want to get rid of duplicates, uh, too many branches that are coming off of one point, and things like that. So this bulging area, I absolutely want to remove. So I think I'm just going to remove it down to this branch here. It also happens to be growing the way that I want it to go. And I think it'll also then 
straighten out a little bit more because it'll be the top leader. So that's what I'm going to do. If it happens to be this one here because it's taller, then I might end up pruning it down to this one next year. But I'm going to try to have it be this one instead. So, it's like the other ones coming in at an angle. It's going to cut it off. It's like that. Now guys, really quick, it's worth noting that in between every single one of these cuts that I'm making, I'm walking around the tree, observing the tree, seeing where these branches are going, you know, seeing what's working well, what's not working well before I end up making these cuts. And that's something that I would really encourage you to do as well, is to just take a moment to just really observe the tree or shrub that you're trying to prune, just to really see what's going on with your tree or shrub. Now, of course, if this is your home garden and then you can take the time to do this, orchardists will do this very quickly and they just, you know, go through really fast because they have so many trees or shrubs that they have to prune. But if you don't have too many, take the time to really observe the things you're pruning. So there's a couple factors that play into the next decision. Uh, one of them being that this branch is starting to interfere with this one, which I quite like this one because it's coming out nice and horizontal. It's pretty swooping and then it curls back up at the end. So that's good. But this one is going to end up interfering with this one, especially once they thicken up. You got to imagine they'll thicken up and then they start rubbing and that's going to start causing wounds and things. Also, this will be nice if we remove this one because then it'll start creating some spaces in between the individual branches as well. So that's why I'm removing this one. And some of these branches have fruiting wood on them. I know that, but that's just some of the sacrifices that I'm willing to make. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that bulging there. And then just snip it right off. The sun came out for a minute and it's, I think it's coming out again. So that's nice. Although I don't mind the rain either. But anyway, I don't like how this branch curves this way so strongly. I really don't like that. So I'm going to prune it down to this branch here. I suppose I could wire it to be more like this, but that's, it's not really necessary. I have a good branch that's growing up here, and I believe this is also a fruiting bud as well. So I'm just going to prune it down to this and uh, leave it at that. I've got a branch below that's essentially, you know, here comes the sun again. I've got a branch below that's doing essentially the same thing, but I've got another branch or another bud over here. Well, short branch, I suppose that I can prune it back to. So I'm just going to do that. Bit of, an, bit of an angle there, like so. So this is the last branch I pruned, but the branch beside it is doing essentially the same thing. And I have another bud up here that I can prune it back to. So I'm just going to do that. It's also growing down, which is I don't really like. This will force it to kind of shoot upwards a little bit better. Could probably prune it back just a little bit more. Just probably will. Like so. So right here I've got a cluster of those branches forming again. You can see it right here. I've got one, two, three, four, and then the main branch here. It's just too many. This one is a little bit further back, but still way too many branches here. So I'm going to prune it back to this one, which also happens to be a fruiting bud but hopefully they'll arch it back up slowly. So it's coming at an angle. I'm pruning it off just like so. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got one more clump of branches back here. Just way too many branches in there. But there is conveniently a really great branch right back here. So I'm just gonna prune it back to that. And that fixes that branch. All right, so here's a look at the Calypso apple tree after pruning. And you can see that I've left a lot of branches on this particular tree. But this one just likes to be more full than all the other ones. And I'm okay with that. There are certain branches that I could have removed for sure. Like that one back there. It's not growing out nice and horizontal. But there's not a lot of branches that are in that direct vicinity. So I would rather have something be there right now. And maybe next year or just coming growing season, I guess. There'll be something better that it'll develop that I can prune it back to. So this is pretty good for this year. I'm happy with it. 
and we'll just see what it does over the course of the growing season. So the sun came out with a vengeance and so did some of the noise unfortunately, I'm sorry about that. But I hope you learned something in this video and if you do have any more questions feel free to leave them down in the comments section. I am definitely more than willing to help. So thank you guys all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Tot de volgende keer.